Ceramic plates are composed of seven primary plates. The African plate. The Australian plate. The Eurasian plate. The North American plate. The South American plate. The Antarctic plate. And the Pacific plate. All seven of these plates are located in the lithosphere. German scientist Alfred Wegener was the first to formally present the idea that the continents were drifting apart. Wegener noticed that the coast of Western Africa and Eastern South America looked as if they fit together. In 1915, Wegener published his theories about continental drift in his novel titled The Origin of Continents and Oceans. Wegener believed that all of the continents had once been joined in a single supercontinent. This ancient landmass is called Pangaea. Two million years ago, Pangaea began to break up. Gondwana, which was composed of Africa, South America, Antarctica, India, and Australia, first split from Laurasia, which was composed of Eurasia and North America. Then 150 million years ago, Gondwana broke up, as well. And around 60 million years ago, North America split off from Eurasia. For years, oceanographers surveying the Atlantic Ocean had taken sonar readings that indicated there was something down there, something big. In 1953, they found out what it was, a 12,000-mile-long mountain range. They called it the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. The reason it's so great, right? To fill us in, I paid a visit to Neil Driscoll, a geologist at the Scripps Institution of Oceanography. One of the big discoveries that was made was that there was this ridge of underwater volcanoes that stood high above the seafloor. How high is a mountain in the middle of the Atlantic? The average seafloor depths are on the order of about four to 5,000 meters. The mid-ocean ridge sits up at about 2,500 meters. So they sit about two and a half kilometers on average higher than the surrounding seafloor that's shown here in the deep blue colors. So that's, uh, that's over a mile high. Yes. And that's where Harry Hess comes back into the story. Analyzing core samples and sonar readings from around the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, Hess made an astonishing discovery, a phenomenon almost beyond comprehension. The age of the Atlantic Ocean floor, he determined, was progressively older the further it moved away from the ridge. Harry Hess had discovered that the seafloor was spreading. He concluded that molten rock was being forced up from inside the earth at the ridge, where it then formed into new crust on the ocean floor. Gradually, it was pushed away on either side as more molten rock continued pushing up from behind it. Hess called his great discovery seafloor spreading. Harry Hess was in a position that he could bring it all together. Things were spreading apart and new earth was being generated. But if you did this for long enough, the earth should grow. And it doesn't. The earth doesn't get any bigger. No. Harry appreciated the fact that if new earth was being generated in one area, they have to be consumed or recycled in another area. The process that recycles the crust of the spreading ocean floor back inside the earth is called subduction. 
But as our next great discovery revealed, it's all part of a much larger process, perhaps the most powerful force on the face of the Earth. happens because hot rock rises, heated by the Earth's core. Near the surface, the rock spreads in two directions and goes sideways. It begins to lose heat. Eventually, the much cooler rock sinks back down. Through this spreading process, the Earth's crust is very slowly dragged apart. And it's this that ultimately causes the continents to move. A transformed boundary occurs when two plates slide parallel against each other. Earthquakes are most likely to occur among this boundary. The most famous example of a transformed boundary is the San Andreas Fault in California. The San Andreas Fault is the edges of the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate. The fault line runs through the Gulf of California and through the western part of California before running back under the ocean. The Pacific Plate is moving northwest with respect to the rest of North America at the rate of several centimeters per year. This means that thousands of years in the future, San Francisco and Los Angeles will be on a piece of land that will break off from the rest of North America and move out into the Pacific Ocean as an island. Remember that this piece of North America is on a different plate which the whole thing is moving. This part of California is not drifting around like a boat in the ocean. It's moving as a part of the whole plate, which is moving northwest. At this type of boundary, the only effects are earthquakes. The sliding process is not smooth and moves in fits and starts. The pressure for the plate to move builds over time and the rocks compress and strain. At some point, the stored energy is released as the plates move, which can be several feet at one time. When it does, an earthquake occurs. There is no mountains or volcanoes forming from this boundary, no matter how many Hollywood movies are made that portray volcanoes erupting in Los Angeles. Divergent boundaries occur when two plates move away from each other. Volcanoes are most likely to occur among this boundary. A divergent boundary is a fault where the two plates are moving away from each other. Now, as plates pull apart, several things may occur. First of all, volcanic activity is common in these areas since mantle easily moves to the surface through the thin fractured rock as it separates. Volcanoes are a sign of a divergent boundary. This happens all along the mid-ocean ridge, where magma is constantly streaming to the surface, creating new ocean floor as the plates separate. If a continent happens to be a place where a divergent boundary occurs, then the continent will begin to be torn apart as the sides of the plates separate, creating a rift valley. The African Rift Valley in East Africa is an example of this occurrence. Eventually, the ocean will separate East Africa from the rest, making a large island.
convergent boundaries occur when two plates collide into one another. Deep trenches are most likely to occur among this boundary. A convergent boundary is a boundary where two separate plates are pushing into each other. There are two kinds of surface features that are associated with a convergent boundary. The first is a deep ocean trench that forms a line of the two colliding plates. One plate made of oceanic crust can slide down underneath another plate, forming this narrow deep trench. This happens because oceanic crust is more dense than continental crust, making it more likely to be pushed back into the mantle. These trenches are the deepest places on the face of the earth, extending over 30,000 feet below the ocean surface. You could take Mount Everest and sink it in the Mariana Trench, the deepest point in the ocean, and still have a mile to the surface of the ocean. That's deep. As one plate is forced under the other one, it begins to melt and a line of volcanoes forms in a parallel line to the trench. If the other plate is oceanic crust, the line of volcanoes will become islands like the Philippines, and if it is continental crust, then it will become a line of volcanic mountains, like the Cascade Range in the western U.S. or the Andes Mountains in South America. If both plates are continental crust, the plates will crumple up as they collide, forming a high mountain range, much like the Himalayas. Continental crust is less dense than oceanic crust, and does not get forced into the mantle. of lava. Each type has a different temperature, viscosity, and chemical composition. The main types of lava are basaltic, andesitic, and last but not least, rhyolitic. As demonstrated by the chart shown, basaltic magma is the highest in temperature, while rhyolitic magma is the lowest. In addition, the viscosity of the magma correlates with the temperature. The higher the temperature, the lower the viscosity. You truly can't beat learning about the beauty of volcanoes. Explosive eruptions fit our image of a volcano. They create large, cone-shaped mountains. These erupt when magma below forces its escape. Fueled by expanding gases and boiling groundwater, the excess heat blasts through. 
Volcanoes like this often have alternating layers of different volcanic materials, ash, cinders and lava. These layered cones are called composite volcanoes. Hawaii isn't near the joining of two plates, but it's a hot spot of volcanic activity. What fuels it? The Hawaiian Islands are hotspot islands, created when a pool of magma breaks through a thin spot in the crust. As it burns through, the plate moves along at 10 centimeters a year. One island is carried away to cool, while the next one is created in assembly line fashion. On the big island of Hawaii, Kilauea has been erupting since 1983 and shows no signs of letting up. It's an example of a second kind of volcano, the shield volcano. The central crater is called a caldera. It still steams, but probably won't erupt violently. Farther out, lava oozes and flows, creating new land as it cools. The wide flow is what creates a shield volcano rather than a cone one. This new unstable bench is pure basalt. Sometimes the flows are only inches from the surface. The thick honey-like lava, typical of Hawaii, cools into a harsh, barren environment that can take years to support life. Cinder cones are a third kind of volcano. Mexico's Paracutin is a dramatic example. Like composite volcanoes, they can be explosively violent visitors to the surface of our planet. They burst forth with enormous quantities of ash, cinders and lava fragments. They rapidly build volcanic mountains, but never as wide as shield volcanoes or as high as composites. Cinder cone shape is determined by the size of the ejected material. 